Hi guys, it is Monday the 1st of May and it is surprisingly sunny and rather comfortable outside. It's 56 degrees. We've had a lot of melting <clears throat> and a lot of stuff has happened since I've been back from Texas and I just thought I'd come and do a face-to-face -face and tell you what happened. So <clears throat> let me tell you first <clears throat> that flying back um, when we landed it normally you land both wheels and then the front wheels come down and that's how you do it but we landed like this one wheel then the other wheel then the front wheel and it was a pretty rough landing um, <coughs> not not horrible but it was noticeably rough so Honey picked me up. By the time we got home, you know, we put on the news. I had a, I had some popcorn for a snack. Um, we're watching the news, and they literally had shut down the airport two hours after I landed because there was so much wind shear that the flights were landing like that. And so we were like, oh, wow, thank God I came in early and, um, you know, got home before all that happened. So the other thing was about seven o'clock, I start, we were <coughs> getting ready to eat dinner and we noticed what we thought was smoke. And it was really like smoke. I mean, I can't even tell you how much it was like smoke. <coughs> I'm sure you're getting it by now that it wasn't smoke. So what it turned out was the clouds had come down and they were literally, they had come down further on one side of the mountain and they were kind of coming up towards us. So it looked like smoke. We got in the car, we drove around, we were like really concerned. Anyway, we found out within about 20 minutes, it wasn't smoke, it was literally clouds. So, anyway, I started to feel a little, my stomach started to hurt. <coughs> and Honey said, well, let's just, let's just go to bed early. Let's just go watch some TV and go to bed early. I could not fall asleep. My stomach hurt so much. And by about 11 o'clock, I was full-blown everything. It was bad. And so <clears throat> clearly I had food poisoning and I, I think I have, I am susceptible to food poisoning because I get it what I consider rather frequently. Like whenever I travel, I get it like every other time. Anyway, we had eaten out every single day I had been there and the last day I literally went directly to the airport. And what I had at the airport was a pretzel dog and a lemonade. <clears throat> and I didn't have anything else except I had some popcorn for a snack when I got home. And <clears throat> um, we had dinner, but Honey didn't, you know, we had dinner here at home. But Honey didn't get sick. So it had to be the pretzel dog or the lemonade. So anyway, my thought process was, so those flights that they were not allowing to land at the Denver International Airport were being diverted to Salt Lake City, Utah. If I had been diverted to Salt Lake City, Utah, I would have had food poisoning in the airport. It would have been bad. Anyway, that's not how it happened. But that's how it could have happened. <coughs> so anyway, so I stayed home two days after my trip. I missed, I was gone Saturday and then we're open Tuesday, Wednesday. And then I was sick Thursday and I was also sick Friday. Well, guess what happened on Friday? Friday, I had a potential buyer flying in from California for the business and I, I couldn't. I just couldn't go. So <laughs> I called Savannah, 
told her I wasn't going to be there just to do the best that she could, that the broker would be there and just do the best that she could. So <laughs> they had 15 scheduled uh, because they canceled some appointments because I wasn't going to be there. The lady came and she stayed from 8.15 8 in the morning till about 11.30 in the morning. Talked a lot to Savannah, watched how the shop operated, and I was just, I was just like, well, this is how it was meant to be. It was meant for me not to be there. So <clears throat> she told my broker that she was going to think about it for a week and that she would let her know what she decided. So she, I'm sorry, I got a quick email I got to take a peek at. Okay, so she uh, emailed my broker on Monday, which was not a week. It was from Friday to Monday, and decided she wanted to buy it. Um, we had to sign a contract and so forth and so on. And um, then there was this little uh, bit about um, the escrow money. And she had till Friday to send the escrow money. And <clears throat> at the very last part of the day, the escrow money got, got transferred. So it appears as though there's only a couple of little things that could be a problem. Um, right now, we're arguing a little bit over the inventory list because Savannah owns her own table and her own grooming equipment. And I'm getting an email saying that the lady's like, well, what about Savannah's uh, table and her grooming equipment and I'm like that was not part of the deal that belongs to her <coughs> so anyway um, it looks like everything should go through I am um, deciding whether to work for someone else or whether to open another shop <sighs> I have decided to work for someone else. I actually have an appointment at four o'clock today with them to discuss that option. But my husband and my best friend um, really think I'm better off owning my own place up here. And I like taking the money that we're getting from the sale, paying off everything and not having to invest more money in a business and having that abundance of money in the savings account. <clears throat> but the more they talk to me, the more I'm like, yeah, I should open my own place. So I'm trying to decide what to do I imagine I'll work until I'm at least 65. So that's five and a half more years. I have to sign a five year lease. So that would kind of be perfect. And it would also give me something else to sell when I'm ready to retire. The other thing is, <clears throat> I thought about combining the grooming business with the furniture business and the way I would do that is my whole front area would be my displays would be made out of repurposed painted distressed furniture and I would use those to display all the items that were for sale whether they were repurposed items that <coughs> honey and I um, worked on ourselves. Or I could also purchase some um, mountain themed kind of home decor. I have a website I order my dog stuff from and they have millions of products. So I could order, mix in with the stuff that we do with that as well as the dog supplies. And, you know, what we could do at the end of everything, at the end of the five years, is if I didn't want to groom anymore, we just rip all that stuff out and turn the whole place into the you know, vintage stuff and things, um, or I sell it and we do, you know, we do booths or we open another storefront. I don't know, 
I don't know. I have so many ideas. I'm just really frustrated by this email where there's some discrepancy. Um, so, yeah. I just want it to be a done deal. And there's just these little minor things that could get in the way that um, are just ridiculous. They're so minute. Um, so, anyway... That's what's going on. There's another, there's something else. There's a reason why you guys haven't seen Honey a lot. And <clears throat> he hasn't been well. Um, he's been going through the VA. He actually met a gentleman while he was at work. A man came in and he was wearing a Navy hat. And Alan said, hey, you're in the Navy. I was in the Navy. And he's like, oh, yeah. Um I was on the USS Tarawa and Alan was like, you gotta be kidding me. I was on that same ship. So they got to talking and everything. And the guy said, Hey, do you have any, do you have any of these medical problems? And Alan's like, well, what do you mean? And the guy lists, you know, some of his medical problems. And Alan's like, well, yeah, actually I do. <clears throat> so bottom line, the guy says, well, here's a card. Call this um, this law firm, and they will help you get uh, through to the VA and file a claim um, for these issues that you're dealing with. So he had all these different tests and had to go to all these different doctors. <clears throat> and he got notified on his last Friday, which was the same day, that the escrow money was deposited to buy the business. On the same day, he was notified that he um, did fall into the qualifications to receive benefits um, for his his ailments. And <clears throat> he has more testing to do. He, I think he has like five more um, <clears throat> before they rate the percentage of his disabilities based on those um, medical issues. So, <clears throat> although I wish he wasn't experiencing these things, um, the fact that he is and that the VA has acknowledged that they're real um, <clears throat> is going to be a great financial benefit to our family and help us because, you know, with some of the things he's dealing with, he may not be able to work a whole lot longer. It just, it's going to depend. Um, so, that's what's going on with Honey and why I haven't seen a lot of him. So anyway, that's that. Um, I'm going to make a couple phone calls about this email. And um, I just, I wanted to let you guys know, it seems like it's going to happen. And kind of what my ideas are for what to do. Let me know what you think. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.